This week on Earth Juice, we're asking what causes forest fires? The Yosemite wildfire has made global headlines for weeks, with fears for the World Heritage Site and its iconic giant sequoia trees. The Rim Fire in Yosemite National Park has decimated over 228,000 acres, more than seven times the size of San Francisco. Dry conditions, overgrown bush, rough terrain has all resulted in the fourth largest wildfire in Californian history. On average, more than 100,000 wildfires burn 4 to 5 million acres of land across the US every single year. America is a wildfire hotspot. But one of the biggest blazes to strike the world was the Great Black Dragon Fire, which burnt more than 18 million acres across China and Russia. So, what causes these wildfires to be triggered in the first place? Well, for wood to catch light, it has to reach a critical temperature, 300 degrees Celsius. This is known as its flash point. At that temperature, the wood releases flammable hydrocarbon vapours, which mixes with oxygen in the air. It combusts and forms fire. So, where does this source of heat actually come from? The most common natural source is lightning strikes. But even hot volcanic lava can cause fires too, and earthquakes can also be the guilty culprit. As rocks rub against each other during a quake, the abrasive friction can cause sufficient ignition temperatures. It's a bit like Mother Nature's very own giant match. When the two surfaces are rubbed together, it creates enough heat to start a fire. But the ignition source can even come from space. As a meteorite passes through the atmosphere and impacts the Earth, it can create a huge amount of friction and therefore heat. In fact, a devastating global fire sparked by a meteorite impact is one theory for the dinosaur mass extinction. But it may come of no surprise that human activity plays a major role in starting fires. In the state of California, of the 20 largest wildfires, 10 were started by man. It's not just arson and campfire carelessness that are causing these fires. Train wheels on the track, power lines, and even shooting a target with a gun can create a spark. So, are these wildfires becoming more severe? Well, up until the 1970s, many natural fires were suppressed in American national parks. And what that did is it just created a massive buildup of dead plant material. So, if a fire did get hold, it was far more devastating. Nowadays, the forests are thinned out with controlled fire to minimise the dead plant material and reduce the natural fuel source. One reason California has been struck so bad this year is the lack of precipitation. It's been the driest year on record, with just 11 centimetres of rain in the first six months of the year. Higher temperatures, mismanaged forests, less rain, and an increase in human activity is all likely to be increasing the severity and number of wildfires. So, is there anything good about these fires? Well, yes, some species love and need the fire. Fire beetles have an amazing ability to detect the infrared radiation given off by the flames. They hone in on the blaze even while it's still going, and the females lay their eggs in the charred wood. Once hatched, the larvae feed on the dead wood. But even the plants themselves can benefit from fire. In fact, some species depend on it. The intense heat helps open up their cones and release their seeds. Some species actually have flammable resin in their leaves to encourage fire, because without it, they couldn't pass on their genetic legacy. So although wildfires do cause a huge amount of devastation, some species do benefit. Let us know in the comments box below if you've ever witnessed a wildfire, and please subscribe to get all of the latest Earth news every Tuesday. Today on Slow Mo, we're going to be filming one of the most destructive forces on the planet. The fire tornado. So fire tornadoes are in fact a real thing and they happen in nature on an epic scale.